I think this will be it. So hello everyone. Um, thank you for coming. My name is Jordan. If you haven't already met me, I'm here with Ken Selger. He's going to be teaching the learn how to use your Android phone to the fullest. This is our first virtual sound learnings of the season. Um, at the end, um, there will be time for question and answers, a Q&A. Um, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, just click the raise hand button at the bottom. And then also at the end, I'm going to open up a poll for a little survey after the class. So I will hand it over to you, Ken. Thank you, Jordan. <clears throat> um, so let's begin. Um, this is about the Android, the other phone, as they say. And uh, what we're going to be covering today is what is an Android? Well, many people don't even know what an Android is. And then I'm going to mention what an operating system is. The market share of the, uh, of the Android market versus the iPhone. And we're going to be doing comparisons between the Android and iPhone throughout the, the webinar. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to talk about the phone and computer aspects of, of this thing. Then we'll go into the apps and uh, we'll talk about those apps. And we'll also cover startup of um, the phone and some more uh, information about it as we go along. My main focus is to, is to get people to, to know more about their phone. Uh, and I hope that you will come out away from this, this webinar with uh, more information show you some things that you may not have known and, and be able to be able to use your phone to a better, uh, to be more useful to you. But at the same time, we're not gonna cover everything that an Android can do. Androids are computers basically, and they are, they just have too many things in them that, that are not common. So we're gonna cover the most common things and, and we're gonna be using a Samsung S9 for our demonstrations. Most other Android phones will be similar, not exactly, but it's very similar because all Android systems will have the same basic functions. The iPhone co <coughs> phone comparisons will be made where applicable. And we will showcase Google apps. All Android phones and iPhones can run Google apps. Other apps would have a much smaller market segment and not appropriate for a general discussion. So who am I? Well, I have a, I have a degree in physics from Philly Dickerson University and I've attended uh, a number of classes at FGCU uh, in astronomy, oceanography, geology, and climate change. I was a principal engineer with Perkin Elmer and I was president of my own uh, small business network, a computer networking company. I worked on the Hubble telescope and on the International Space Station. And I was an optical engineer for the Hexagon and Corona CIA satellite photo recon programs that uh, Perkin Elmer and others uh, participate in. So what kind of a physicist am I? I'm, I consider myself an engineering physicist. And my first job out of college was in measurement standards Would, while we were building the Atlas and the Centaur missiles. The Atlas you can see over on the right side of your screen. And we had to certify measurement instruments, sometimes to, to a millionth of an inch. So it was, it was a demanding job, but it was a very interesting job. I learned an awful lot on it. So what do I know about phones? Well, my computer company would install phones as part of our computer system. And I have personally used an internet phone, a voice over IP phone for the last 15 years. Some of the features of a voice over IP uh, phone is that you can get free calling throughout the United States, has such advanced features as being able to call both your home phone and the cell phone simultaneously. And there are, are versions that will allow you to what they call follow me, 
where it will start with your home phone. If you don't answer within three rings, it moves to your cell phone. And then after three more rings, we'll, we'll go to a yet a third phone. Um, you can also have multiple phone numbers on one line. So you could have, for example, um, two people using the same line. And um, so a husband and wife, for example, would be a good example. Uh, and you could tell by the ring who the call was coming for, and you could answer it appropriately. And one of the, one of the other things about a, an I, I, a voice over IP phone is you can bring the phone with you. You can take the phone up to up north or even overseas for that matter and make calls on the cheap. I've been an Android phone user for about 12 years. So what is an Android? An Android is the phone's operating system. It's been created by Google, which is now Alphabet, based on Linux, uh, a computer system that was created in 1969. It connects the phone's hardware to apps and the user. The three main functions are to manage the resources of the computer, because your, your little smartphone is a computer. Uh, and so that manages the CPU, the memory, the disk drives, and printers. And the disk drives I'm referring to are now solid state disk drives, which are common in all smartphones. And it also creates a user interface so that the user has a uniform connection to the phone. And it provides services for application software. For example, um, the keyboard on a, on a phone is a service that the operating system would provide to the app uh, manufacturer. And uh, when he needs a uh, keyboard input, he would simply call for a particular uh, service and that would come up pop up. So which phones use Androids? Well, Google, Samsung, LG and others all use the Android system. Some of them modify it to enhance their own usage. Okay. The iPhone uses a proprietary software from Apple and they frequently have updates and sometimes to the frustration of the users relocates a bunch of the functions. That happens very rarely with an Android phone. There are updates, but they don't uh, relocate things. So what's the operating system? What are the benefits for, for uh, people? Well, a developer sees a uniform interface. The apps, he can move an app from one phone to another phone, with, often without modification. So it reduces his development time. The developers can con concentrate on their apps and not on basic functions like keyboard input. Phone manufacturers realize lower costs and pass those savings to the end user. The major mobile operating systems are Android, iPhone, and Windows. Now, Windows has less than 1% of the total market, so it really is between Android and, and Apple that all the operating systems exist. Both of them have very similar functions. But the, the iPhone operating system runs only on iPhones, while Androids run on many, many different phones. But the end user doesn't really see the operating system directly. He sees the results, basically. So the market is kind of interesting. Worldwide, Android has, is dominating the market compared to, to the iPhone. But um, in, the, uh, in, the, in our nation, in the United States, it's almost 50-50. And the primary reason for this is that the Android will operate on low-cost phones, which dominates the world market. Locally, some of our communities, including Pelican Sound, uh, are about 90% iPhone. 
And I believe that the Apple easy to use reputation probably has created this mix. A large number of users in these communities are iPhone and Windows computer users. And I think this appears to be a price driven uh, situation because the, the iPhone and the high end Androids run about the same price, but Macs, the computers are much more expensive compared to a Windows computer. So how do you know which, which OS you have? Well, if you go into the settings and then into the area called about phone, then select software information. The Apple version, uh, <clears throat> you'll see the, the uh, which, which version you have. The Apple version is appended to the iOS name. So in this, in this case, I have uh, it's version 13.3. Uh, so why would you upgrade? Well, the, the main reason to upgrade, uh, two reasons basically, it has the latest features that you can employ on your phone. And it also tries to fix security flaws. Um, it doesn't always fix them, but it, it does try to address them. Most of the time, I think all, they eventually all get fixed. So what are the major differences? The, the physical security of the iPhone is superior. It's very hard to crack, even by law enforcement. It has face and fingerprint recognition, which is better than the Android. At the same token, the, Samsung, the, the ease of use of the keyboard makes it much easier to use a Android phone. And I will demonstrate that in a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> messaging on a Android is really not very complicated and makes it relatively easy to work with. Whereas the iPhone has three different messaging systems creating some confusion and at times lost messages. So the iPhone security can be too good. Recently, a friend of mine inadvertently corrupted her Apple ID password during an update. The password was no longer any good. Her security questions did not work and the phone locked her out. Two hours on the phone with Apple Care could not unlock the phone. Apple recommended abandoning her, abandoning her email and starting a new one. That way friends and associates would be unable to contact her until she, was, she notified everybody in her address book. However, after a restart, a new set of security questions emerged, which did unlock the phone and end the crisis. So in starting a, uh, uh, an Android phone, the first thing to look for is where the top of the phone is. Android phones have a very, very chic look to them. There is, is very little indication of what is top or bottom, but there is a slot for your ear near the top. So that tells you that's where the top is. If you then press and hold the area where the home button should be, the phone will vibrate and start. Now the startup changes based on how the phone was last used. Sometimes, depending upon the usage, a swipe from left to right is needed to get to the next screen. The next screen should be a security screen. And at that point, emergency, emergency calls could be made by a non-owner without violating the security to provide for an emergency uh, calling situation. But if, if <clears throat> that's not necessary, the next thing that will happen is face recognition will start. If that doesn't work, they have a, a secondary uh, security option will, will then start. So we now have the starting screen. And, at, and the starting screen gives you a quick phone health check. Notifications and operating parameters are at the top of the screen. You'll see on the right, uh, this screen was 
uh, recorded at 11 minutes after 10. Uh, a a um, security check, that little symbol is a security check showing that the phone is secure. Uh, and then over on the right side is the Wi-Fi um, sig signal showing how much Wi-Fi signal is available. Next to that is the uh, wireless signal for the towers, cell phone towers. And then finally, how much charge there is on the phone. So the below that is the Google always on vo voice and text search bar. So the home screen apps with four semi-fix apps are at the bottom of the screen. And in the center, in the bottom left, are four dots indicating that there are four home screens and that because of the larger first dot, you know that you're on the primary home screen. So all the apps can be moved around for your convenience. You can relocate them anywhere you want on multiple home screens and the like. And you can do that by pressing and holding an app icon and when it comes free, slide it to your desired location. It can be moved to another home screen by sliding that app icon to the edge of the screen and it will go on to the next screen. The all apps button is in the lower center and it has behind it every app that's on the phone. The four semi-permanent apps can be replaced from that all app screen at any time. And they will then, these four apps will then move from home screen to the, to the next screen, to the next screen, always keeping those four apps uh, available. So um, it's surprisingly with everything a smartphone can do that it still can work like a phone. So <clears throat> the current phone crop out there has really good audio quality, but it will degrade if you use it on speakerphone or on cell towers. The best way to use it is through Wi-Fi. <clears throat> Excuse me. Many plans allow for unlimited calling and or messaging. So the number one issue with, with using the phone for calling is calls come in at the wrong time. You're in the middle of a meeting, you're in the middle of a church, Sometimes places where you don't want the phone to ring, um, but they do. Now there's an app which I use and I speak very highly of, which will mute calls and or messages based on what's in my calendar. It sees I'm, I'm going to an event on the calendar and it will keep the, the uh, calls muted until uh, that meeting is over with. I, but uh, emergency calls can still get through by having the user call twice within five minutes. Now, early on, there was, uh, there was a, an expression that was common, said that there's an app for that, implying that there was always some, some app for everything possible. Well, there can also be too many apps for that. And we'll get into that in a few minutes because everybody makes apps and messaging is a really good example of, of all the apps. I have lined up eight different messaging apps on my on this uh, screen here. One down here is Twitter and, and I'm sure you'll recognize this. This is over in the right is SMS, a small messaging system. So there are many, many uh, messaging apps. So the apps that we're going to talk about are Google. Um, and the reason we use Google is because they work across all platforms, both on the computers as well as on the phones. The manufacturing apps work only on a single brand, so it wouldn't be appropriate to have a discussion about them. Google is often one of the best apps. And the, the Google apps can talk to one another. They can share data. 
when when iPhone came out with with Sorry, um, there was a rush to bring out the voice assisted apps, and Google and Samsung both have have excellent voice assisted uh, uh, apps. But Google has a built in one in its uh, in its search engine, which doesn't require any additional software. So the leading Android apps are Gmail, Contacts, Maps, Calendar, and Messaging. And many of these apps will share their data to help improve their functionality. Maps use the location data in Contacts. Gmail and Messaging can use Contacts info uh, birthdays can show up on your, your calendar so that you know that, that a friend or a relative birthday is, is, is due. So um, Google has uh, a search engine, which is, which is the, the most widely used search engine around. And on a Android phone, it's always on. It's as soon as you, as soon as the phone starts up, it's there. It's ready to go, and you can do a Google search either using text or voice. Once you've found what what you you want, you then could cut and paste that information and bring it to another app. There is a sub menu that allows you to call phone numbers. So if you you found the information in a certain app. And it was a phone number that you're looking for. Uh, when you click on it, it will give you the option of dialing that phone. So all home screens have four changeable fixed apps. And as you can see in the illustration on the right, I have contacts, messaging, a uh, calendar, and camera. Those are my four uh, home screen apps that will move from home screen to home screen. Down at the bottom are the soft keys for current apps, the home and back keys. So the soft keys are neat because they can be changed by an app for additional controls. Most do not, most keep the, the uh, controls the same. The current apps, symbol, which is three vertical lines, is often called a sideways burger, hamburger type, or menu, okay, sideways menu. The home key will return you to your primary home screen by simply a light tap. Now, going into some of the built-in apps, there is a calendar, or calculator, I'm sorry, and it can work for most people, like a basic four function calculator I'm showing on the left. But it also has a scientific mode. And here I am displaying uh, the sine and cosines squared summed together for uh, a uh, angle of 30 degrees. The other built-in apps, there is a clock timer, which will accurately uh, determine what the time of the day is. It will also provide timing for cooking or other activities. And it also provides a, an alarm. You can wake up to it every morning or you can set an alarm for, for some activity that you're gonna do in an hour or two. There are music apps that are, that are available to all these phones and they're iTunes, Pandora, um, Amazon Music and others. Social media apps include Facebook, Instagram, and others. And they now have pay by phone. This is one of the areas I won't go into much detail because I don't believe that many people use this as a common means of, of paying, but there is Google Pay and Samsung Pay as well as others available. And YouTube is, is one of the built-in apps. So today's cameras, one of the built-in apps, has a huge number of megapixels, which 
for both their front and their back cameras. They have uh, forward facing and backward facing cameras. So you can use them whichever suits your needs. The, there's photo editing from Google, Amazon, and others. Uh, the photo editing can really enhance your photos and they can even go so far as to blend a series of rapidly taken photos together. Photo storage is another area. So occasionally I need to download a picture from Google. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I find Google Photos the easiest to download. Amazon would be okay, but requires some more, more effort. Samsung would be actually very difficult. All these, these uh, photo storage facilities have photo editing options built into them and all can create albums and movies. So getting into the ease of use, um, the big thing about an Android phone is the keyboard has both the letters and the numbers on the same key face. You don't have to switch from one screen to the next to get to the numbers. And it's got built in two punctuation marks down here on the uh, next to the space bar. So you'll notice that I, I on the left side of this image, I have an iPhone and on the right side, I have an Android phone. You'll notice the sizes appear to be different, but the actual physical sizes of the two phones are virtually identical but the screen size on the Android is actually bigger. So um, it, it gives you more screen size for the same physical size. Now, you'll notice that the two punctuation marks were, were a comma and a period, which is fine. It's, those are the most common, commonly used punctuation marks but it doesn't meet all your requirements. So this is a, a little piece that I find many people don't know about. Um, if you place your finger on that punctuation mark and hold it there for about a second, up pops a, a menu of additional punctuation marks. And by simply keeping your finger on the screen and sliding it, to the punctuation mark you want, and then lifting your finger off. You then have placed that punctuation mark in the text that you are, you are writing. There are two interesting things about this. Uh, there's a, there, there are same punctuation marks are on the left side and on the right side. On the right side, when you, when you uh, are done with it, uh, it defaults back to the period as the default punctuation mark. But on the left side, if you've used um, a question mark, say, for example, it will then default to that question mark being the last character that you selected. And it can be useful and, and helpful in, in certain text editing things. So how do you text edit? You've made a typing mistake way back up in the, your text, and how do you go back there and fix it? Well, you simply press and hold your finger on the word that you want to fix, and the word will become highlighted with two handles at either end. You can now expand or contract that area by placing your finger on these two handles, one on each one of the handles separately. And you can then slide the handle to include more characters or less. At the same time, a magnified window will appear to, to assist you in making your editing. Text sizes can be changed by placing two fingers on the screen and spreading them wide or narrow to to give you either larger or smaller text. One of the features that, that I have on my phone 
is a voice to text app. It takes incoming voicemail and converts it to text. And it's handy if you're obviously in a meeting and you hear the phone buzz because it's, it's got a call coming in. It will take and convert that, that voicemail to text and you can read it without disturbing your meeting. Um, and you can see here on the left side, I got a message from affordable golf carts that my golf cart is, is ready to be picked up. So uh, now they don't, the, the conversion from, from uh, voice to text is not perfect, but it gets very, very high uh, percentage of it correct. And it's easy to understand. Notifications, the phone will give you a notification when certain things occur. And they can use both sound and or vibration. So, and some of those can be customized for special purposes. For example, you can customize the sound that sound makes for certain phone numbers. If your boss calls, for example, and you wanted to, to play a certain tune, to indicate that's your boss, you can do that. Some of the categories can be customized, it's like the ringtone, which is what we just talked about. And they can be time sensitive, so they will not ring at night. So email speed, flexibility, and convenience makes it popular, but how does it work, okay? Uh, you have to know a little bit about how the email system works to make the best use of it. So it uses these components. There's an email server, which is hardware. There's an email client, which is software. And examples of that are Microsoft's Outlook, AOL, and then Webmail, which is what Comcast uses. Then there are devices that are using these, these uh, pieces of of uh, software, and they can be computers, tablets, or smartphones. So the basic email operation is a message is composed using an email client. The this email client is eff effectively a word processor, and it's creating the text that you want to send. The message is then sent to the recipient's email server server notifies the recipient and then the recipient can view the message using his his email client and send the message uh, uses one uses one system called smtp simple mail transfer protocol and but receiving mail there are two different systems so those two different systems are called pop3 and imap POP3 is the oldest, it's been around since email started. Um, and it has, it checks the server for, for messages periodically, every five minutes, every 10 minutes, whatever you set it up for. Uh, it then downloads the messages and er but erases it from the server. So the message now resides on only the downloading device. It was your computer, then you don't see it on your phone. So it, it, it was a <clears throat> service that was very popular in the early days. Now that we have all these uh, smartphones and other devices, uh, it has lost favor and everybody is now converting to, to IMAP where each device can view it, but it stays on the server until it is removed or erased. So every device can see the message. So the most popular app of all is Gmail, which can use either POP3 or IMAP. It works with most email clients, Outlook, AOL, and so on. All the key features are available on the mobile app. So if you have <clears throat> it on your phone, um, all the main features that, that you would need to transfer, to uh, 
reply to reply all to forward. Those are all available on your phone. However, the, the, uh, the computer version of that app has a lot more capability and can do uh, searches via date, uh, automatically fill in uh, parts of the email and, and uh, really give you a lot more flexibility. Uh, but the mobile app can meet most individual needs without the special needs for the computer. Contacts. I love this database because we can put everything you know um, in there on people, okay? Put photos, birth dates, anniversaries, and you can create special contact lists for work, home, and for other activities. You can call, text, or email from any entry in the, in the contact list. And maps will find the address of your contacts. So if you have placed your, your uh, address into your contact list, you can double click that address and the Maps app will take over and show you a map to that address. So here's Maps, <clears throat> which, is a, which is voice controlled, can provide turn-by-turn -turn instructions to a location. It will find nearby restaurants, gas stations, and banks, and other things. Requests are disabled while driving for safety. So you've got to start it up while you are parked, and then it will work fine. The software is constantly updated with the new map data and photos. If you have a auto nav system that requires an update from the manufacturer the auto manufacturer <clears throat> and we have found that those are typically costly upgrades maps can use your car audio system via bluetooth so it would send the car your turn-by-turn -turn instructions via a bluetooth connection <clears throat> I have seen in some cases, the approaching turn can have an image of what, the, what it would appear to look like to the driver, show you the, the exit ramp, say, for a, a, a freeway, and uh, will help you to, to uh, know where to turn. So calendar, I have here the Google Calendar. And it's a great way to keep track of appointments, reminders, and tasks. You can, you can actually modify your calendar with a touch screen control. So uh, you can see that there are several appointments that are set up on this calendar. And if I simply press one with my finger, once it comes alive, which takes about two seconds, I then can slide it to a new date and time. And one of the other things that, that can be done with these calendars is they can be done, they can create events remotely via your email. So if somebody sends you an invite to a meeting, they can actually put it right in your calendar. So sometimes two apps can work better than just one. I, for example, use both Google Calendar and Microsoft Outlook Calendar. The Google Calendar tracks my events so, so that my Do Not Disturb app can mute my phone when I'm in that event. I use the Outlook Calendar for a to-do list, like changing the air filters. And it has a snooze button on there, which allows me to postpone that activity when it's inconvenient. So SMS stands for small messaging system. And you can have multiple conversations going on simultaneously. And it's also created a whole new language uh, in people are trying to abbreviate all that stuff. So I'll just 
let you look at it. Uh, I'm sure most of you have already seen these. The iPhone iMessaging system can be a little confusing. Um, it may not work with Android devices. The, the iMessaging system uses a proprietary software from Apple. And early versions of, of the Android could not receive a message sent from an iPhone. Now notice, you know, if you notice in the image on the right, the screenshot of an iPhone, there are two clients, two contacts, which are in green, and you can see three, possibly four, that are in blue. Well, the green contacts are people with a Google or Android type phone, and the blue ones all have iPhones. And they're trying to show you before you use it, what, where it's gonna go, or what's, what the user is using. And you have to be careful because uh, it has shown in the past that people sending out a group of messages, um, if they include some Android uh, folks, the Apple, iPhone people get the message, but the Androids do not. So one of the things that happens with apps is they don't sleep. Once you open an app, it stays open, okay? And there is an open app button on the Samsung S9, which is the three vertical bars. And if you press it, all the open apps pop up. Um, and I have it on the screen on the right. They are in somewhat uh, smaller versions of the screen, but you can scroll through all the apps that are open. You can go to the left or to the right and pick out the app that you want. So if, if you're trying to find some information uh, and you knew that you had it open before, this might be a very valuable way to, to go there. You scroll over to where, where the app is and then scroll through uh, its features to find the information you want. You can then copy and paste it if you want. Uh, and if you, if you do that, when you press the all open button again, the app that you were in when you started this process is now side alongside of your the, the app you're working in. Makes it very convenient for you to copy and paste. So what I have seen happen on some occasions is no matter whether you have an iPhone or a Android, you can get too many apps open at once. Um, when you do, the system resources can be stressed and performance degraded. There is a, the, the, there's a close all button in the all apps uh, key, which you can see on the right. And by simply pressing that, it closes all the apps instantaneously. It's recommended you do this periodically and then do a, week, a weekly restart. Uh, the restart button is part of the power button uh, on the right-hand side. So um, the uh, most service providers are now offering unlimited voice and text. That's because those services require very, very little uh, amounts of data. Video, however, on the other hand, can consume a huge amount of data. So just by comparison, a voice message can be one to nine kilobytes. Single picture can run 10 megabytes. A video can be gigabytes. So if you're in a Wi-Fi situation where 
let's say you have Wi-Fi in your home, you can use the Wi-Fi as a free ride. Uh, you can then use the Wi-Fi to transfer the information via the internet to your, your phone remotely. The, uh, <clears throat> most phones, however, will use Wi-Fi as its preferred connection. If, if it, it has a uh, part of the settings that says, what's your preferred connection? And most people would select Wi-Fi. So in mobile services, there are now only three service providers. There are three people making towers. There's Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. But there are many people reselling those services. Comcast is also a reseller, but for Comcast customers only. So what is, Com what is Comcast or Xfinity plan? Their basic plan is $15 a month per gigabyte of data with unlimited text and voice. So two or even more could share a gigabyte for a total cost of $15 plus tax. Uh, if you're using Verizon or T-Mobile or, or AT&T, you will find that this is a tremendous savings. And using Wi-Fi to, to do most of your data transfers can make this an easy strategy for you to use. The cell phone service is provided by Verizon, which will prioritize its customers. <clears throat> so what does that mean? Well. Locally, it works great. And I've never seen anybody have an issue with it. But I've, I have heard in one case when there was limited service in an area where you might have just one bar on your, your tower uh, signal, uh, your calls could get dropped as a Verizon customer came in and grabbed up the, the available bandwidth. But that, that was one case and it disappeared after they upgraded that tower. So 5G, we've hear tremendously on TV today about all about 5G in the fifth generation of cell service. It is replacing 4G, which is the long-term evolution uh, version. And it will provide faster downloads. In theory, it can be 20 times faster than 4G. But the current networks uh, are just a bit faster right now than 4G, but it is expected to get a lot better in the near future. The question is, do you need it? If you're downloading video, if you're downloading uh, Netflix on your phone, you might need it. But that would not be the, the norm, I would think. So here's a comparison of the five different wireless protocols that are out there. 1G, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So currently, 3G, 4G, and 5G are concurrent, although the phone companies are talking about shutting down the 3G service to make room for the 5G service. So <clears throat> to uh, sort of give you a thumbnail of, of what how I work, uh, I've listed the apps that I have on my phone. It's not a complete list, but it gives the major ones that I have. I have Alexa, the home assistant one. I have a Kindle app where I download the New York Times daily and it's a book reader as well. I have a Bank of America app, a Google Drive storage. I have Dropbox, which is another um, cloud storage uh, capability. Flight View, which allows me to look at airline data and I can, I can go to uh, pick up somebody at the airport and check on their flights to see if it's on time and other information about the flight. 
I have gate access, which we as Pelican Sound uh, residents have to uh, let people come in through the gate. I have the GIN app, which is the USGA golf scoring post app. I have LastPass, which is a password manager. And then I have Libby, which is a library manager. I have two library memberships, one here in, in Lee County and one up north. And I can go to either one of those and download books. Mighty Grocer, which uh, <clears throat> is probably my most used app of all. It allows me to, to with my voice, create a list of things that I want from, from the uh, store. And as I put them in my cart, I can check them off that I've got them. <clears throat> There's my fitness pal, which I can keep track of weight, exercise, and calories. I have network tools for, for computer work. I have note, which is a, a, a notebook type of uh, app. I have UMA, which is my voice over IP phone app. <clears throat> Pandora for, for music apps. I have the Pelican Sound app to making all my reservations. I have Photos, which is a photo viewer. In this case, it's a, a uh, Google photo viewer. I have Polar. Uh, Polar is a uh, uh, exercise tracking app. I wear a strap and it will keep track of my heart rate. Uh, Silence Premium is my Do Not Disturb app. I have a sky map app, which allows me to, to look at the sky <clears throat> and find out all the stars, daylight or darkness, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I have a speed test for checking the, to make sure that the, the uh, phone is coming in as fast as it should. I have Xtreme, which is a <clears throat> Xfinity streaming, which is the streaming app from Xfinity. I was a nav app. This is a, uh, uh, an app um, which works differently than maps and it will give you turn by turn instructions. And I found that it's it apparently most useful in congested areas like around New York City. I have a web a grill app, which allows me to uh, monitor the uh, cooking of, of food on my grill while I'm still in the kitchen, okay? Uh, I've gone to a different uh, brand of, of app, uh, mainly because I didn't like the way Weber handled the uh, turning, of, turning the app on or off. It was difficult to tell whether it was on or off, and I often would find it had been left on and the battery dead. But I have another one now that does the same kind of a function. I have Wi-Fi analysis, which allows me to test the Wi-Fi signals in the house. And I have X, X, FI, which helps me to locate a phone. So um, to, we're now at the end of our little session here. And I've been decided to, to prompt you or, or uh, feed you a couple of questions which I think you might want to know. Uh, and the first question is, how do you get more information? What do you need to do uh, to find out uh, how to use your phone better? And what I do is I Google. So I, I'll try to create, tell Google what I'm trying to find and let it come up with uh, you know, some ideas. I will look through several of them because Often I find that you can't rely just on a single, single choice. You have to look, make sure that, that you get good agreement with, with three or four different people. And the other thing which I've used is a service or a website called Phone Scoop, which gives you all the technical information that you might ever want on a cell phone. Tells you the battery life, tells you how much memory is in there, tells you every little detail about a phone. Probably more stuff than you wanna know, but at least it's all there in one spot. And the other thing I was gonna mention is about a case. I recently replaced the case 
on my Samsung S9. And I found that some of the functions I was having trouble with were due to the case. Uh, the case I, I now have on this phone um, is a little slimmer and it allows me to do several functions that I was having difficulty with. One of which was to do screenshots. Uh, the case itself was interfering with how I could, could press the buttons. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Jordan and Jordan will check to see if there's any other questions and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Hello, thank you, Ken. That was a great class. Thank you to everyone who joined. Um, if you do have any questions for Ken before he leaves, you can click the raise hand button at the bottom. Um, if there's any questions from any of the attendees, I see a few. I'm gonna let Larry, you can go ahead and ask your question first for Ken. Um, at the bottom of your screen, Larry, there's the, you have to unmute your. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. We can hear you. Right. Uh, so tell me an easy way to alphabetize my apps. I mean, I've got several pages and they're all over the place. How do I do that again? So, say that again, you can repeat it, please. Uh, yes, how do I alphabetize my apps so that I can go from A to Z in order of, of the names of the apps. Now I have them scattered all over several pages and I have to search for an app. Well, in, in, the, in the all app button on the center home screen, they are automatically listed alphabet, alphabetized um, correctly that way. But you but, don't seem to have. I, okay, I don't see that. I mean, I see the apps. I don't see anything at the bottom. All center button. Uh, and it will bring up all the apps you have on your phone. Um, and they're, they're already alphabetized in that, in that screen. Now, the, <clears throat> if you want to alph alphabetize them on your home screens, <clears throat> excuse me, you can do that, but you'll have to do it manually. You just press and hold the app uh, icon. And when it, when it comes free, you can slide it to wherever you want. You can slide it to the next screen. You can slide it uh, to a different position on that screen. So you can you can move them around to, to suit yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. did that do it for you, Larry? Um, yeah. You can't, you can't seem to find the all app button. I can't, yeah, I can't find the all app button. It's the mm -hmm. white button in the, in the center of the, lower center of the, of the home screen. If you press the home button. Um, where, I don't even know where the home button is. <laughs> the home button is the lower lower center of the screen. It's a, uh, almost looks like a square, but it's not quite a square. It's got a little bit rounded edges. Um, and. Well, here's my home. The center. But that's. Okay. I don't know. All right, I'll, I won't hold up. I'll, I'll figure it out. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then we do have Carol asked a question. Um, she did type it, so I don't know if you want to unmute and ask another one, Carol. Uh, but the question she asked for you, Ken, is how do I get my calendar to quit changing time zones on the appointments I've added? Um, I, would, could you repeat that, Jordan? I couldn't hear it. She said, how do I get my calendar to quit changing time zones on the appointments I've added? She said she's tried everything. <laughs> I can add to that. But yeah. because I, can you hear me? We can hear you, Carol. Okay. When, because I because I move time zones when I come here for the winter, I, I I always know what time I want something to be on my calendar. And if I'm in the central time zone, I put like today's thing on my calendar at one o'clock. When I get here, I want it to be on at one o'clock and I, it always shows up at two o'clock and I can't figure out how to make it quit doing that. Um, it sounds like something that's either in the, the clock app or in your settings. Um, and and uh, I don't know off the top of my head where that, that would be if it's in the settings, 
but I would look in either of those two locations. Okay, I'm not sure I've tried the clock app, so I think I'll try that, thanks. Okay. Is there anyone else who had any other questions for Ken? Okay, well, thank you again to everyone. Um, if you just stick around for just a few more moments, I'm gonna open up a poll uh, so you can do a survey on the class. Um, so I'm gonna open that up now. It does that. Carol, I know you're unmuted. Are you able to see the poll? Did it pop? Yes. Okay, perfect. So if everyone, all the attendees could take that poll, um, I will leave it open for the next two minutes. So you can read through, or a few minutes, so you can read through it and uh, do the survey for me, please, and thank you. Also, for those of you who are still here, um, we do have about six other virtual sound learning classes for the remainder of the month. Um, if you haven't already signed up, there's some good ones. Uh, they're always in the social wave. Well, hopefully we can move back to in-person, but for now we are offering virtual classes. Right, I think everybody has taken the poll. Okay. All right, well, thank you, Ken. Have a good day. You too. Thank you to everyone. Bye.